Welcome everybody, town hall number 86. Thank you for that prompt earlier, Daniel. And it's a great town hall. We're very uh, lucky to have our friend who has been with us from the inception of Platform OS, Daniel uh, from New Zealand. And the reason why I pause there a moment because I've got my special New Zealand hat on. So I thought it would be good to wear that in honor uh, of Daniel Telfer, who is going to take us through some of the stuff he's been working on and building on Platform OS, particularly around the module setup, feature summary that he's going to take us through, chat in action, what's next, all around video chat module for Platform OS. So without further ado, Daniel, it's all yours. Okay, thanks Adam. Um, I'll just share my screen and um, just turn off my video as well. Okay, can everyone sh see my screen? Yes, coming through yeah. beautifully. Cool. So, Video chat, um, browser-based communications, um, video chat, chat from inside your community, marketplace, or other online business. So let's go. Okay. Um, first of all, um, I'll just take you through um, an intro about video chat and what it means. Um, then we'll have a look, we'll set the module up um, and we'll go through and watch it in action. Um, then we will have a quick look at what's next for the video chat um, module. Powered by Platform OS, of course. Um, so it's the core backend um, and obviously the, your existing infrastructure too, if you're working on Platform OS. Um, this is good because it means there's a little daylight between um, your existing um, instances um, and the video chat module, um, which means that you can use all the same tools that you're currently used to using um, to get and manipulate and use the video chat module in the way that you want, want to. Um, JavaScript, um, it's built on Vue and Nuxt currently. Um, and there's a fair amount of web RTC or web real-time communications API that JavaScript um, provides um, out of the box. Twilio, um, Twilio is used to manage or power manage the video streaming. Um, currently it's necessary um, and is especially helpful for larger group chats um, to manage the streams and create a good user experience. With that said, um, with the introduction of Platform OS WebSockets, um, GraphQL subscriptions, and other advances, um, there's a possibility to move away from one-to-one um, -one communications to start and eventually group chats um, as well. Um, video chats are 100% um, browser-based currently, um, but also um, once again with technology moving forward and things like um, Electron's cross-platform desktop apps with JavaScript, HTML, and CMS, I mean, sorry, and CSS, um, that is used by Visual Studio Code um, and Slack and a heap of others. Um, there is the possibility to make a cross-platform application to support video chat in the future. Video communications, where in-person meetings may be hard to achieve, costly, time-consuming, um, video is a no-brainer. But why not Zoom? Um, Zoom, GoToMeetings, Teams, Slack, Messenger, um, there's a heap of them and they're all great. Um, but integration into your existing web projects can be messy. Um, white labeling's not always available um, and providing a seamless solution that allows the data to be managed inside your existing infrastructure, it's not always easy or even sometimes possible. Um, currently, um, as you'll know, when the need for video arises, um, quite often in an online scenario, people often move to the likes of Zoom, um, create and send a link um, and chat there, um, or even move over to Facebook Messenger. Um, at which point 
the community or marketplace um, or other online business that instigated the connection loses that very connection that it was meant to facilitate. Um, it can become increasingly hard to maintain the connections from social, um, communicative and financial perspectives. So Zoom um, and the likes do a great job of helping people communicate in general, but are not focused on communities, marketplace and online businesses um, and how they communicate with their members, users and customers. And the need for a single unified experience um, that helps them maintain those connections um, that the businesses need to grow. So what if a user could video chat um, at a click of a button um, with the staff or other users um, without stepping outside of the existing infrastructure? And now with as much data as possible, um, inside that infrastructure, it can be used to provide more functionality, better offerings, and keep people engaged where you need them. Um, in the case of a marketplace, of course, the goal is to connect people and make it easy to buy, sell, exchange goods and services and information. Um, imagine a marketplace that connects consultants with clients where the consultant could video conference a client and record that meeting um, from inside your existing online experience or without stepping outside, um, where charges could be applied and even passed on um, automatically to the client without much hassle from either's perspective. Um, and all achieved with less development time using existing payment gateways and functionality. Um, and because all the data is part of your existing infrastructure. Um, video chat module is designed to give communities, marketplaces, and other online businesses the power to connect people from within, maintaining continuity, connections, and revenue streams. Um, the current features of the video chat beta um, are up to four person video chats, um, personal rooms for registered members of registered users. Um, with vanity URLs possible, um, screen sharing, um, guest access. So for users that aren't currently um, registered or members, um, so they can still be part of the chat. So if you need to invite someone from outside the community, um, that can still be done. Um, invitations to invite people using email, um, your own default mail, um, and copy, copying URLs. Uh, multiple users, of course, and contacts list. There's also more features in the works and um, many other small features that are part of um, video chat interface, which we'll have a look at um, shortly. So what we're going to do now is hope that the demo gods <laughs> are with us. <laughs> and um, we'll now set up and install video chat um, on a fresh instance, and with the help of a companion sign-in module, um, we'll be able to use it standalone without any development required. So what we'll do is I will move across to from OS um, Partner Portal, and we will look to create a new instance. Um, what we'll do is here as well. Sorry about this. I need to copy and paste this, but I didn't. So we'll just set up the instance, obviously, um, in staging. Make sure everything's right. And create the instance. And it says that it's scheduled. Now, the first thing that we're going to do here is um, currently we need to um, add the Twilio integration before we start. 
Um, one other thing that we would require normally would be something like SendGrid uh, or something of the sort. Um, so that they can plug in and send emails directly from inside the app. Um, we won't do that at the moment because we're on staging and it might obviously work. So to set this up, we just click Manage Twilio, Enable Twilio Integration. And that part's done. So normally um, what you would come in and do is we would go to the um, marketplace, obviously, um, and you can see the video chat module in here. So I've updated it um, and the video chat sign in module there. Um, but because um, I'm obviously the owner of those modules, they automatically turn up for me in here. So we'll install the video chat sign module. And by the way, if there's any questions, just yell out. Uh, do you want to bring up the instance while that's doing that? Daniel, just so we can see it and then um, we'll I'll refresh. Bring that up in a second. Cool. And we'll go there. So now that said, we'll get nothing for a little bit. So we'll just re refresh this a couple of times. So in the background, it's done all of the deploy of all your code. Well, all of the uh, the code related to this module, the schema, CRUD functions, graph queries, views, liquid views, partials, etc. So we'll just sign up. The first user that signs up um, gets admin rights. Um, so the first user that starts um, obviously takes control of um, the master admin for this. Um, so sign in, name, I've not been here before, obviously it's gonna. Yeah, oh, sorry, loud on the keyboard. And we're in. So of course, I'm the only person in here currently. Um, and under here, you can see my profile, which is currently fairly limited. And details in here. So we've got a few things. We can enable or disable the user, um, change their role, um, which obviously I wouldn't want to do um, either of those at the moment, um, and then allow or unallow personal rooms from this user. Um, so at the moment, like I say, it's beta, it's fairly simple. It's got the core features um, that things need. Um, what we do have is rooms. Um, and when you come in, you automatically get a room created. So if, you, if the user signs up, they get a room created. Um, in actual fact, it's currently set up so that when a person signs up and currently comes in, they get a room, but someone has to allow them to use that personal room. Um, so it's disabled by default. And that is basically for security reasons so that no one can just sign up and start, you know, videoing or having meetings and stuff um, on the side without you knowing. Um, so in our um, meeting room here, one thing we can do is we can um, change the URL um, to a valid URL. It creates one from your username to start with, um, but we can do that here. Once again, a user can disable their own room um, and allow guests or stop guests from being allowed to, to come in. I will update the room. It's updated the URL in here. And should have done so over here as well. So at the side menu where you can open the room, settings, the rest of it as well. Um, now, we will simply, I will go back to, go back to here and we'll just open the room. Um, it uses WebRTC, so we have to allow the video um, to take effect. Um, so that's what it's doing there. Um, we've now got access to the video. And from here, it's pretty simple. We can turn audio on and off, um, all the features that you'd normally have with um, video chats. Um, and we can, we've got a password here. This is for 
um, inviting users from outside, which I'll do to Adam in a second. So we can invite users. Um, if we set to, uh, sorry, if we set sender it up, we'd be able to send an email out. We can send it using our default email, so it provides that, um, or we can copy a link. So I'm going to copy that link um, at the moment here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bear with me for a second. I'm just going to send this to Adam. He doesn't seem to be in the meeting. Sorry, are you um, sending that to me via Slack? Or, oh, I'm the community manager. If you're sending I it through the chat the in manager. Zoom. Yeah. Okay. Nice so I'll it. send that through Zoom to Adam. Um, so he should be able to pick that up now. Okay. All right. I'm going to minimize my Zoom screen and then head over to a browser. My browser is asking for access. I'm going to sign in as Adam. So I've, I've just signed in. And you can see now we can use screen share. Um, and it's telling me that I'm all right in my room. So we'll go into plan. Adam should turn up on the screen and everyone should be able to see him. <laughs> I'm turning um, off my audio in the video chat i can see you i don't know uh i've got to have to go back to zoom to see if we can oh yeah there we are i can see me by the way it looks jumpy on daniel's screen but on my screen it's very fluid so we're kind of doing screen share on top of a video chat within a video chat yeah we could always try and share screen inside <laughs> yeah uh, I'll, if you want let's just uh share my screen quickly <laughs> not sure exactly <laughs> So we're chatting in two places at once. Yeah, so um, once again, you can still send um, and invite more people from here. Um, we can look at participants on the side there. So if the meeting gets larger, we've got participants just like in, um, in Zoom. Um, we can invite people from here as well. Um, and then we can also do things like um, click on settings, and we can change our camera, which means that I should now be looking at the camera rather than um, outside thereof. Um, yeah, so I mean, there's not um, a whole lot more to say, really, <laughs> to, be, to be honest. Um, it, it's hard to show these things off without showing them in action. Um, I would um, I'd love to share my screen because for yeah, those watching, uh, yeah. I'd like to sh like to show maybe they can see that there's no latency on my side at least. So let's go ahead and I'll try and do a screen share. And let me know. Okay, how does that look everyone? There's Daniel, Daniel, you and I, I mean, from my side, it's real time. Um, wait one second. I have to now, for them to see that, I have to actually. Well, I'm sharing my screen, my screen. So I'm hoping oh. that on the Zoom share, <laughs> that which I'm sharing, that they will see that it's not jittery. I mean, it's not for me. Maybe Zoom is doing some extra things. So, but it, it's perfect. They may only be able to see. Can anyone um, see whether or not? Yeah, anyone in the chat, let us know if you can see uh, my screen. And how is Daniel coming across in the chat? This may cause a problem. <laughs> um, I've now moved. My Colin Frost, are you uh, are you there? Yeah, it's coming through a little little jittery, but it, it okay. is coming through. Yeah. But, so then, uh, it, just so those who are watching, Daniel and I having the chat through the video chat. It's fluid, no latency issues. But I, I'm guessing that there may be some extra things going on with the Zoom and the way it's recording and screen sharing. So you're going to have to install this module and have a play with you, play with it because it is brilliant. I'm going to stop sharing so that you can take over again, Daniel. Okay. Um, turn back. Right then. Yeah, so Scott, um, Scott just highlighted it's not jittery when he uses it with Daniel either. It's because of the video recording happening. Uh, that's what's causing it. Yeah, so um, 
what we'll do now is we'll just end the end the chat here and we'll, we'll go back into we'll go back into Slack. So I will um, end. And it just takes me. Oh, back are to... you sharing your screen again? Do you want to just share your screen, Daniel? Am I? Okay. The second. There we go. It's coming up again. You sharing the screen again? Okay. Brilliant. So. Um, what's next? For video chat. Um, currently, um, I'm working on video recording. Um, so to start with, that will be local recording. Um, it will mean you record it just like you do in um, Zoom, where it um, will paginate all the different people in the room together, um, including the, the speaker. Um, and then you'll be able to save it down locally onto your computer and then upload it wherever you'd like. Um, obviously in the future, um, it will be able to go directly up to um, social and to um, platform OS as well. With also um, being able to possibly do it in the, in the future, um, once we've got web sockets and things like that available, um, where we could do, and you could um, render that call or, or use, or um, save that record after the fact um, and do it from um, the server rather than locally. Um, web sockets. Um, Adam talked about this before. Obviously, this is not my feature. Um, it's platform versus. <laughs> but just to push it along a little bit, um, the future with web sockets um, is bright. Um, instant messaging, real time notifications. And what that means for um, video chat is it will become more and more app like. Um, more and more like um, the likes of Slack, um, which is where I'd like this to sort of head. Um, but instead of being Slack where it's for business purposes and you're using it outside of your, um, for, for your own business purpose, what this will be targeted at is for um, online businesses, marketplaces, um, communities and things like that. So this can be done directly inside the marketplace rather than having to step outside the marketplace and do all this stuff. The users need to be able to communicate in a marketplace between each other. Um, so they could do that using instant messaging, um, obviously. Um, and with real-time notifications, what that means is that we can do things just like in Slack at the moment. Um, you can see whether or not there's someone um, online, which will become available. Um, we'll be able to see whether or not a room is in action or not in action. Um, you'd be able to then click on a person and make a call, just like in Slack, um, you'd get a ringtone notification um, if you're online that um, there's a call and you'd be able to answer that call just like you can at the moment. But instead of once again, instead of being outside and having to move it to third party platforms outside of, um, users would be able to do that, communicate with staff, with other users in the case of marketplaces, communities, etc. And um, there's a lot of extra stuff that can happen um, with WebSockets. Um, we'll also, I'll also be looking to um, improve the um, API um, so that there's pretty much nothing you can't do um, from inside um, video chat. Um, at the same time with video chat, I want to keep it um, as open as possible so that people can um, use it how they want to. Um, so it will be white labeled. There's no video chat messaging on there anywhere. Um, and the name probably will change, by the way. It's video chat at the moment because it makes sense. <laughs> um, but yeah, going forward, um, you should have control over how this looks and, and how it performs and, and what it does. You should just be able to tap into the core functionality and be able to use that stuff um, and then have access to the data um, through GraphQL um, Liquid and all the rest of the things that you currently use inside 
your platform. And it's no different than using any other module um, that you will have used before. Um, documentation, um, or so get documentation going, um, as there's none at the moment. Um, but in saying that, you click on the um, on the play button and you, you talk to each other and you, and you stop. But um, in the future, um, there'll also be a documentation site for this as well. Um, that's so that's brilliant. pretty much. I've got a question chat. that's come through from Martin about can the video uh, be embedded in another page, or do you need to redirect or direct to that particular URL? Um, the URL can be changed. So I've set it up. So it, currently, it can't be embedded, um, but what it can be is moved um, around. So um, in the um, template, um, you can alter where that where that page lives. Um, so, yeah, like I say, not embedded, but what can be embedded is um, the links that go to, obviously, the links that open that page or, um, or anything else. So the rest of the stuff will be have to be taken out of there. It will just be that singular page that has a URL that you define where that, you are, where that, where that lives. Um, there's a little bit of work to be done on it, but, but yeah, essentially, um, in the template, you'll be able to change. You'll also be able to change um, how it works with how it interacts with your database as well, what users are involved. So I've set it up in um, the um, template so that basically you can add your um, database or your GraphQL um, schemas to it, and you'll be able to use um, those rather than having to use predefined ones that come with um, video chat. Um, those are in there, but they can be changed um, so that you can use your existing um, user database. Hey Adam, Martin had a question earlier that you might have missed. Uh, he's asking, is there a free trial? What is the cost ongoing? And how many people can you have in a meeting at one time? So three questions there. The, yes, how many so, people in the meeting was for maximum at that at this time? Is that right, Daniel? Yeah, it is. It is at this time. Um, it will be able to be more. Now, there is one caveat to this whole thing. Currently, um, Twilio is a paid for service. So at the moment, um, the beta version is free. Um, and it's free so that people can have a look at it and um, direct me where to go as well. Um, obviously, without feedback and without all that stuff um, there's no way for me to um, really know exactly how people are going to use and integrate this into um, their instances mm -hmm. um, so currently while it's in um, beta it will be paid for down the track um, but hopefully with web sockets and things we will be able to reduce the cost especially for one-to-one -one, um, originally um, because the traffic's not so much um, but once you start getting groups that are bigger, you start to have to have um, a back end that will manage those streams so that one person's not using far too much data and, and the whole thing just goes pear shaped and you end up with the jittery, um, jittering that we saw before um, to keep things moving along. So, yeah, so Twilio does have costs, um, it can add up in larger rooms um, and that's one reason for currently what, what I could do currently is use um, another middleware so find another server to do exactly what WebSockets would do um, but that's what Twilio is for um, and I don't didn't see the any reason to to do that when potentially we're going to be able to do that on platform OS shortly anyway um, and once again keeping everything um, inside one infrastructure. So basically this is your like this is running on your instances. If someone has dedicated servers that they're using through platform OS, then once again it's still inside your instance. You have control of what's going on. The data's not going anywhere else. Um, currently at the moment with Twilio, obviously it is, but yeah, the the dream is to get it all inside. 
platform OS eventually. I think for those wondering about, you know, the four person limit, the use case in this scenario is where you have a lot of chat one-on-one, -on -one, maybe one-on-two -on -two or three, not bigger groups, but specifically as Daniel pointed out earlier, uh, it, within a marketplace context for people providing services, whether that's mental health over the wire, over, over the web, uh, it's professional services, advice, mentoring, uh, a check-in, whatever it might be, you know, the first five minutes is free and then the clock starts ticking and being able to control that and then invoice appropriately, uh, maybe even a disclaimer pops up to say, this conversation may be charged at the rate of X after the first 15 minutes consultation. Do you accept? Yes. Then it takes you through. I mean, there's so many different use cases that this solves, especially around the vanity URL and having it, as Daniel said multiple times now, all in one place. And that's exciting for business owners because building business logic and rules around that, how long people on calls, you know, what, are, what are service providers or, or the people in the marketplace offering services over video chat charging. It's, do you then take a subscription model around that? Oh, you charge per hour. All we do is facilitate and create the environment for you to have those chats and we just take a small percentage. There's just so many opportunities for business cases to be commoditized around this. And Daniel, you've done an amazing job. Incredible. Yeah. yeah so, I mean, yeah, just like Adam said, um, at the moment it's limited to four, but it's not limited by, um, it's been limited by me currently. One, to focus on um, what I'm um, implementing. Um, the more the numbers go up, um, there's just extra stuff to do. So it, it, it will. Um, and currently, if I wanted it to or needed it to at the moment, it could be a lot higher. But for the for the use case at the moment, um, it's not going to replace meetings like this here. Um, there, we could I could set it up so they could have 50 people in a meeting, um, but the costs do go up. So in Twilio, um, the costs aren't high, but you get you know, 50 people um, for a meeting. So it's the same with Zoom. Like Zoom, I think they have an API um, and I think you can use it in other ways, but then you start paying. So no, what, there's no way to use these services inside your um, instances or community without having that, where you start paying for that service. So it's unfortunate. And that's another reason why I want to get this onto Platform OS so that you're paying one bill reducing the costs and keeping everything in-house. Um, just currently, that's not quite feasible. Um, and I will look to um, bring someone else on board um, to help me um, once we get that bar down the track to help um, make this move forward quicker once we start getting and seeing how people want to want and can use this. And you and Scott have been using this for your own conversations on a weekly basis. Is that right? Or did I just make that story up? No, we have. Yeah. So we've been doing that for a while now. It was a bit hairy to start with, but um, <laughs> every week I'd be doing something else that caused a problem. <laughs> um, but um, as in the last few months, um, yeah, on a weekly basis, we meet and um we chat and we haven't had any real major, um, we haven't had really had any issues in the last while um, for that matter. So it seems to work um, fairly well. We don't have any audio problems or, um, or video latency really at all, not from my end anyway. Fantastic. There's a feature every week is what uh, Scott was saying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a feature every week. Um, so we, yeah, I would like to keep to that. Um, we'll see how that, <laughs> yeah, all bug fix, <laughs> as Scott said. <laughs> um, so yeah, the recording's taken me a little bit longer to implement than I um, thought. We'll start looking at all sorts of, um, when, as, as you'll know with um, development, sometimes it seems easy on the surface and then all of a sudden <laughs> you realise there's a lot more in the, and the works behind things so um but 
yeah, as the, the big ones get ticked off, then some of the smaller um, things can be done. And I'd love to get feedback on um, if people do try it out and what they think they need to be able to use. Um, for instance, if you had um, a consultant for beauty that was, you know, showing someone how to do their makeup online or, or, or of the sort, someone, something like that, um, you know, other sort of consultants that do stuff, but, you know, now you can have a worldwide audience rather than having to go and meet someone. You can actually, you know, chat with your f um, favorite celeb and do it um, inside a marketplace. Um, and that's what, that's the sort of thing this could be used for. So the numbers are quite low, but but how would that work? And, um, and what features would people want the video chat module to take care of? And what features would they um, implement themselves? Because like I said before, because it's inside platform where you have access to all that data. So the video chat module could take care of, um, so you can plug your payment gateway into it somehow. Um, or is that something that would just be taken care of by the instance itself? No need to have to try and, you know, create other um, gateways or functionality. Um, it could be integrated into the existing functionality. It keeps things um, consistent for users um, and all the rest of it. So it's what video chat needs to do versus what the instances um, want to do but the the plan is that there should be little that you can't do with it because it's in platform always i just wanted to highlight too um because you might be wondering what about uh you can see a little bit of my setup there because the camera's facing out but uh mobile i've actually got my camera turned on it's it's ready to ready for the host, Daniel. If you want to host me on a separate video chat uh, on mobile, so you know a mechanic who I, I've just called the local mechanic, and I need to have a video video chat, and I'm pointing it into the uh, the car bay engine, and so of course he's able to see what's going on, or she, and uh, and give me some advice. So, it's, so the sky's the limit. There's a use case for this already. Um, in a roundabout way, um, Adam quite often talks about um, a spark here in New Zealand who have a um, product called WeDo. And WeDo is... Um, you a, want to stop sharing your screen and I'll bring that up to, uh, to highlight while you're talking. Yeah, so WeDo is a, um, is a marketplace. And what that does is it connects um, users with um, tradies and basically anyone else that Spark decides that they want to like try and connect at the moment. Um, I hear it's going great guns. Um, and this would the use case for this here would be that basically someone goes and gets quotes from people, but they want to, you know, they want to chat with their builder to make sure he looks like the kind of guy that they want to like have you know, doing up the bathroom. And um, through here they could. And what that means for um, KiwiDo now or WeDo. Um, yeah, KiwiDo, they're, they're going through some interesting acquisition opportunities. More on that later. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, what, what this means is that, um, yeah, they could chat directly from there. But what it means for um, KiwiDo now is that um, they can keep people inside their marketplace. They don't have to venture outside that marketplace to do stuff um, because once they've got, and, and I'm not sure how this sounds, but once they've got contact with that builder, um, it would be good if the easiest place for them to, to communicate with that person um, was inside their marketplace rather than moving out to, um, the likes of Facebook Messenger and, and things like that, which takes the conversation um, completely away. Um, and, you know, marketplaces want to try and um, be their own thing, not be um, a platform to support 
Another example of, of while we're talking about it, uh, because this is something that Intel are looking to enhance uh, within their community in DevMesh. So where we're taking a, a look at people in the DevMesh community, it could be a, an option now for me to have a chat with Fabricio. So I send a message, have a video chat, click, boom, I'm connected. And because this is using Intel single sign-on, there's a, at least a, a level of trust on the user account that uh, will enable me to have a chat with Fabricio. Maybe he goes, yeah, we can, and um, just add your credit card now. If you want to talk about uh, some advanced AI and that type of thing, you know, I want to I want to find a professor of something and connect with them, and boom, video chat. The sky's the limit. I'm going to stop sharing now. I think earlier there was a question uh, from Anthony about what are the potential for integration into Cyclist. So probably a question for Martin and Daniel. Um, but uh, yeah, could you respond to that, um, Martin or Daniel? I'll go first. Um, no reason why we couldn't. Um, it just there's just logistics to work out um, between um, the likes of me and Martin and Martin having a look at the module when it's beta first and us working through any um, teething problems or anything that needs to happen to make it work um, like they'd want it to um, inside Cyclide. So it's only a matter of, um, for, the, for the platforms like Cyclide and CBO and, and others, it's just a matter of um, working through um, how it needs to work um, inside those, those platforms. Yeah, and being a module and namespacing it, uh, highly likely, highly likely. Yeah, there's no reason why it couldn't, and and it, and it might work fairly simply just by um, install it. Well, installing it on um, Cyclide somehow. However, they want me to do that, um, but it also um, it might just take a a little bit of tweaking depending on how how it needs to interact with their, their system. But um, one of the things Cyclide likes to highlight is their flexibility to allow you to go under the hood of Cyclide to augment what's there. So uh, it's very highly probable. I'm, uh, I'm sure yeah. between Daniel and, and the Cyclide team, something can happen. Because, yeah, because of the way this works, like, and because you can go under the hood um, in Cyclide, there's no reason why you couldn't currently um, go in behind the scenes and actually install the module, um, and it would be as it would be as simple as. Uh, actually, I'm not sure whether they can install that from the partner portal, but if it was installed for them, then um, by someone who had admin access, then yeah, it could be used. It could be used today, just how we saw it work before. Um, but to work inside um, Cyclide, where they where you purchase it from inside Cyclide, um, that may take a little bit more thinking through. Brilliant. Any other final questions? Good question, Anthony. And Martin is going to uh, connect up with Daniel. Um, they'll dig into how that uh, integration, the module deployment can work out on Cyclide. Uh, and of course, Anybody who wants to have a play can do so right now. It's in the module marketplace. So you can go in, set up an instance, and just as quickly as you saw Daniel create and deploy an instance, which was, I think, within three minutes, you'll have video chat. And then when you go live and you put your vanity URL on, you can start offering it as a, as a part of your overall solutions that you're building for your customers. So you will have to talk to Adam about the costs of Twilio currently, um, while it's in beta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Don't go too crazy. Because currently on staging, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, platform is footing the bill while it's on staging. We are. So <laughs> we have we're, well, we foot the bill for everything on staging. So uh, uh, we will we will be offering a staging upgrade for those who want it, and there will be a cost. So you're going to have your own development environments, but that's that's later. That's next year. Meanwhile, we'll just we'll just burn that money for you. But having the community developing all these sorts of cool things is 
worth every cent. Uh, I know Daniel and Daniel and Scott with the, the login and the video chat and them using it every week has been so exciting. Every meeting I've had with Daniel over the last months, we've jumped on and used video chat as well. And then I kind of, I'm, I'm there and I just forget that I'm on, I'm, oh yeah, I'm not on Zoom. I'm actually on Daniel's video chat. So it's it's been brilliant work, mate. Very, very impressive. Thank you. Dan Chat. Yeah, yeah, we're still working on a name. <laughs> Keep coming could, back to could video be a chat. Competition. It says it's video chat says what it is currently. Yeah, so that's right. Know when they look through the marketplace what it is, but um we will keep working on um a name. I've thought to lots of things and we'll work on we'll work on getting it ready to go first and when it goes um out of beta we'll we'll rebrand and, and I think didn't, didn't you want to call it Zoomia? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zoom Zoomia, yeah. Zoomier than Zoom. All right. Well, mate, fantastic stuff. And I think everybody is uh, impressed. I am. That's for sure. It worked well. The demo was perfect, seamless, click, 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 done. What more could you ask for? So thanks, everybody, for being in the meeting today, this town hall. We've got some more coming up where we'll be going through web sockets in more detail and instant messaging, which Daniel, you'll be able to then jump in and leverage. So uh, final thoughts, questions, congratulations. I think an applause is in order. Well done. Awesome stuff, mate. And uh, like, good to see the, my, my fellow Australasian mates doing us proud. Daniel, thanks again. Everybody, we'll see you in the next town hall. And uh, bye for now.